Morning, folks, or afternoon, or evening, depending on when you see this. Um, today, we're looking at 7-5 geometry notes. Um, today's objective is to use side splitter theorem and the triangle angle bisector theorem. So those are the two we're going to be looking at. When two or more parallel lines intersect other lines, proportional segments are formed. So in theorem 7.4, we're talking about side splitter theorem. If a parallel line over here on the diagram, RS, you know, if a line is parallel to one side of a triangle, which is XY, and intersects the other two sides, QX and QY, then it divides those sides proportionally. Okay, so please notice, we get XR to RQ, or RQ to XR, and QS to SY, okay, when we're looking at it, but they have it flipped, they have the reciprocal of that. So, Keep that in mind as we're looking at now parallel line split. Now it only splits the sides. We can't use this property to find the length that's going across here because that's not part of a side splitter theorem because it's not being split. The sides that are being split by that extra parallel line is the main thing we need to work with. So here in this problem, I've got two sides that are being split. Okay, I've got uh, MP being split in the 12 and x plus 1, and mn being split into 9 and x. So that's how I'm going to write my relationship. At this point, everything else is the same we've been doing. So you guys go ahead and solve. Turn me off. Go ahead and solve it. Make sure you're solving on your own because you got to practice these things and then turn it back on. Okay, so at the cross product, you got 12x equals 9 times x plus 1. So you distribute the 9, you'll get 9x plus 9. I'm going to subtract 9, and I'm going to get 3x plus, is equal to 9, and I divide by 3, so x is 3. Now I'm going to check my question. It said, what is the value of x in the diagram? And it is 3. Now, in this next one, it's your turn. Give it a try. Keep in mind, it's side splitter theorem, and it's pretty much the ratio that's already sitting there in front of you. You just have to write it down, do the cross product, get it done. So go. Now, you should be done. You, you've turned it off, and you are ready to check your work, not do your work. So we got A to A plus 4, and I got 12 to 18. Once I get that set up, it's cross multiply, 18A, and 12 times A plus 4. So I got 18A is equal to 12A plus 48. And I subtract 12A, so I get 6A equal 48. Divide by 6, and A is 8. And they wanted to say, what is the value of A in the diagram? And we have found it, and we're ready to move on. Remember, that's side splitter, as we're looking at it. Two lines, one's parallel inside the triangle to one of the other sides of the triangle, and it splits the sides into two parts. These parts are proportional. Now, there's, there's a corollary to the side splitter theorem. If three parallel lines intersect two transversals, three parallel lines intersect two transversals, then the segments intercepted on the transversal are proportional. Check it out. It's proportional. Okay? So I've got a problem here where I've got more than three parallel lines, okay, in, intersected by two transversals. Okay, and I can set this up as far as the openings. The openings are proportional. So three campsites are shown in the diagram. What's the length of site A, a along the river? So site A along the river is right here. Please keep in mind, these are parallel, much like the side splitter theorem when we're working with them. So when I set this up, I should be looking at the idea that I'm going to set up like relationship with corresponding sides. So I've got x here, x is to 8, x is to 8, as 9 is to 7.2. And I'm just setting up corresponding sides, corresponding sides on the same side that are split. Okay, so now I cross multiply, and I find out that 7.2 and x is 10, so site A is 10 yards long along the river. Okay, what's the length of site C along the river, or along the road, I should say? So we got this part, and I know 8 is the 6.4, and 
and 7.2 is to, let's call it X again. I'll, I'll do, have a different color for it. Or, yeah, let's call it X again. We'll call it X. Okay. This is the green X this time. They're not the same X. They're not the same value. So I've got 8 is the 6.4, and that's my green X. So that's my green X as I'm going through. And now after I set it up, it's just cross multiplying. 8x is 6.4, 7.2, and 8x is equal to 46.08, and I divide by 8 and find out that x is equal to 5.76. So site C is 5.76 yards long along the road. Notice I'm really working on making sure I get those units put in there as I'm working with things. And again, side splitter, um, corollary here, I've got two transversals crossing three or more parallel lines, and I can talk about the proportionality of each side and corresponding, corresponding as we talk about it. Okay, moving on here. Now we got something called angle bisector theorem, triangle angle bisector theorem. If a ray bisects an angle of a triangle, then it divides the opposite side into two segments. There are uh, proportion, two segments that are proportional to the other two sides of the triangle. Now, keep in mind, I have an angle bisector. It's depicted here. Pay attention to this. A lot of people don't carefully look at the diagrams. You've got to look at the diagrams. So, keep in mind, angle bisector. Be able to look at the diagram. Notice. Now, this ray AD bisects angle CAB. Notice the things that are proportional. CD is proportional to DB. Okay. CA is proportional to BA. As we're looking through this. Now, when we're looking at this one here, RQ is proportional to QS. RP is proportional to PS. Everything on the same side, okay, is on, you got to consider corresponding sides. 10 is corresponding to 18. 12 is corresponding to X. Okay, so I can pull this off and I have um, 10 times X, 12 times 18. And I have 10x equals 20, 216, and x is equal to 21.6. One of the things I want to make sure of that you notice, remember the properties we did in uh, the first um, section, 7.1? If I look at this this way, I have this splitting it up. I can talk about 10, everything on the same side of the uh, angle bisector. I could talk about this as being 10 to 12 is equal to 18 to x. And how I know that this is an equivalent statement is that when I do my cross product, I get 10x is equal to 12 times 18. That's exactly what was there, okay? So I could set it up this way as well. I got 10 to 18, 12 to x, or 10 to 12, 18 to x. Both are equivalent statements. But I'm going to go on to the next one and set it up the way the property talks about it. And here I've got y to 24 and 9.6 to 16. Angle bisector. Look for it. Because not just because it's got something up there, because it could be um, something else splitting up the triangle. So now I've got y is the 24, 9.6 is the 16. And now you go ahead and get the solve on. Give it a try. Remember, turn off the video and give it a try. Okay, now that you're done, you got y equals y times 16, so you got 16y on the left. You got 24 times 9.6 on the right. Now I just divide by 16 eventually here after I multiply two, the 24 times 9.6 and get 230.4, and y is 14.4. And again, I could have set this up as y is the 9.6 and 24 is the 16 because that would be a means exchange property move, and it's the same solution. Now, 
in this one, self quiz, figure out what should go here based on what's happening in this diagram. So A is to B as what is to E. A is to B is O D. Okay, so you guys go ahead and do the next two. Turn the video off and do the next two. So you're back, and I got E to F, E to F, E to F, and I got B to, ooh, C, C should be there. And then C, I'm looking at A is to B plus C, A is to B plus C, as something is the E plus F, so it should be D as well, okay? Now, our last five, six problems. Give them a try, see what you know. And here, this is side splitter. Notice it's side splitter. And notice how I'm saying the property as I'm working with it. I can go x is the 10 and 15 is the 30. Okay. And notice how I got 15. I want 30, 45 minus 30 to get 15 right here. And that's what I'm going to set up. And I'm going to cross multiply. I get 30x equal 150 and divide by 3, 30 and I get x is 5. This next one, I've got angle bisector theorem going on. And remember, I've got 12 is the 16, x is the 20, and that's my setup. Cross multiply, 240 equals 16x. Okay, dividing by 16, I get x is equal to 15. Next, I've got another angle bisector. Okay, I've got x is the 25, 9 is the 15. And I'm able to get that set up. So x is the uh, x times 15, 9 times 25. So that's going to be 225 is equal to 15x. And 15 dividing into 225 is 15. Now, this next two are working with side splitter. Okay? So I've got side splitter actions coming on. I've got side splitter. So I've got x is the 62, 70 is the 56. And I cross multiply to get those done. So 70 is times 62, and x times 56. So I got 56x equals 62 times 70. I multiply that out, and I get 4340. Dividing by 56, I get that x is 77.5. Now, the last one here is probably a more difficult one because of the stuff I've got to do with it. But work through it one step at a time. Okay, don't get overwhelmed, but here I'm looking at 9 is the 4x minus 2, and 12 is the 3x plus 2. So 9 is the 4x minus 2, and 12 is the 3x plus 2, corresponding sides. Okay, so now I'm looking at this, and I've got 12 times 4x minus 2, and i got 9 times 3x plus 2, and I distribute, and I get 48x minus 24, and I get 27x plus 18. Now I'm just going to combine like terms. I'm going to subtract 27 and get 21 minus 24 plus 8 is equal to 18. And then subtract 24, or add 24, and I get 42. And I have divide by 21, and x is 2. Hopefully those went well for you. And remember, this is 77.5 feet. This one, I don't have any other units on these, but pay attention to your units when you're done with your problems. That should be the end of notes, okay? So you're done with your um, notes for 7.5. And you have your assignment for 7.5 day A and 7.5 B to do on Monday during your digital learning day. Have yourselves a good day, folks.